life. It is Saturday, November 12th. It's been, I think, about a month since I did a video. So um, it's been a while, but I've been fairly busy with teaching and my own work. But I'm at a crucial point in my process. I'm just about to submit my um, lists and my rationales for my comprehensive exams. And um, it's sort of a weird genre where I have to sort of state what it is that I want to be studying, the specific subfields and talk about why I feel they're important. And how to explain my work and defend it is a really, really difficult process for me because I feel in some ways like I know what kind of work that I want to emulate. I know which theorists I find really useful, uh, which theorists I find are really good at writing or expressing themselves. And I want to get there, but I'm not quite there yet. And so every time I get feedback on something, whether that's these lists or whether it's um, edits for an article, I just submitted a journal article um, about a week and a half ago, and it's almost going to be published in a couple of weeks. Um, but there's a sense that I know, I know what it is that I want to do, and I kind of know how I want to frame it, but I'm not quite there. Like, I'm not quite able to express it, and that's the problem with being a student, that um, there's a lot of pressure, men may think it's perceived pressure, a lot of pressure to kind of be there already, to be producing work that is publishable, to be um, creating theories that are excellent and polished. Now there's a really wonderful clip that I saw about two weeks ago, and it's actually a clip um, that was created out of a little piece that Ira Glass did on storytelling. And if you don't know Ira Glass, he um, is the creator, uh, the storyteller on This American Life on uh, NPR down in the States. So in the interest of sort of letting the work speak for itself, I want to briefly insert the small clip of Ira Glass talking about this problem. And the sort of graphic animation of this was done by an artist uh, named David Xiang Liu. So I'll put in the clip, uh, let you watch it, and then I'll come back and talk a little bit about why I think this is so, so, so important. Nobody uh, tells people who are beginners, and I really wish somebody had told this to me, is that um, all of us who do creative work, like, you know, we get into it, and we get into it because we have good taste. But it's like there's a gap, that for the first couple of years that you're making stuff, what you're making isn't so good, okay? It's not that great. It's, it's, it's trying to be good. It has ambition to be good, but it's not quite that good. But your taste, the thing that got you into the game, your, your taste is still killer. And your taste is good enough that you can tell that what you're making is kind of a disappointment to you. You know what I mean? A lot of people never get past that phase. A lot of people at that point, they quit. And the thing I, I would just like say to you with all my heart is that m most everybody I know who does interesting creative work they went through a phase of years where they had really good taste, they could tell what they were making wasn't as good as they wanted it to be. They knew it felt short. It didn't have this special thing that we wanted it to have. And the thing I would say to you is everybody goes through that. And for you to go through it, if you're going through it right now, if you're just getting out of that phase, you got to know it's totally normal. And the most important possible thing you could do is do a lot of work. Do a huge volume of work. Put yourself on a deadline so that every week or every month you know you're going to finish one story. Because it's only by actually going through a volume of work that you're actually going to ca catch up and close that gap. And your, the work you're making will be as good as your ambitions. In my case, like I, I took longer to figure out how to do this than anybody I've ever met. It takes a while. It's going to take you a while. It's normal to take a while. And you just have to fight your way through that. Okay? All right, so I'm back and you've had a chance to look at this wonderful video. I think the idea of being a beginner but having really killer taste is a really incredible way to think about the problem of being a student um, in the academy. That as we read more theorists, we know what we like. I, um, I love the way that Judith Butler writes, for instance. Some people might not, um, but I love the way that Judith Butler writes. Um, there are a number of theorists that I really admire, and when I'm writing, I often will kind of turn to their theory, read a page or two, and say, okay, I need to get in the mindset of how this theorist links things together and works through stuff in their head. 
The problem is I think there's a culture of needing to sort of be there already and it can really destroy your academic self-esteem and it can make people drop out. As Ira Glass says, a lot of people um, don't get past that point of realizing that they need to be more productive and just kind of do more work, keep doing it, and you'll eventually get there. A lot of people drop out. And I've been there. Um, I started off originally in rhetoric, and I didn't really know what rhetoric was, and I, I, didn't, I couldn't emulate it. And it actually wasn't the stuff that I wanted to emulate. And um, I thought that if I wasn't producing publishable papers in my courses that I might as well just quit, that I wasn't a worthy academic. Um, I think that's hard. When you're writing papers especially, um, we're told that papers have to be of publishable length, so in my discipline that's usually 20 to 25 pages, and when people talk about article length papers then, and because we're being graded on it, I think that there's a misconception that the better the paper is, the more ready it is to be published. And then what happens is you get an A or an A plus on a paper, you send it off to a publisher, and they send you back feedback and they say this needs to be revised. And I think this can be a really devastating experience, especially the first time that you send off a journal article and it gets uh, either flat out rejected or um, accepted with revisions, that you kind of wonder where you went wrong and shouldn't you have known it already. So I think that realizing that you need to do a vast output of work before you get to that point is so crucial. And I know that graduate school privileges people whose output is kind of there already, right? And some people might just sort of naturally um, have a way of thinking through things, or perhaps they have experience in other disciplines that lets them write or express themselves, you know, in that way that they actually sort of already aspire to. For some of us, it takes longer. Um, I started graduate school three years ago, and um, I'm still I'm still not there. I'm getting little sort of snippets of of what I aspire to, and when I get those moments, I have to hold on to them because that's a really good indicator that I'm getting there, and it's going to be a slow process. And the problem with academia is that we need to be publishing right already. There's sort of this big looming genre of the CV and having to. You know, having a few articles published by the time you finish your PhD, going to conferences, all those kinds of things. So I think that there is a culture that does not privilege the fact that we are all in process. That Judith Butler did not write like Judith Butler did when she was a student, right? I think there's this sense that we've forgotten, um, and I guess the Marxist in me would say that there is, um, there are means of production and there are modes of production. And that when you are looking at a piece of theory, you don't necessarily see those means and modes of production in that scholar's trajectory through um, their experience and uh, their maturity. So I think that if we can cling to that, um, we as scholars might be a bit gentler with ourselves as we go through this slow process of realizing that what we're producing is maybe not awesome. It's not so great, and that's the point that we're students. And I know that I come back to this a lot in my videos and I think about it a lot because I sometimes forget that I'm still a student and the work that I produce sometimes is really shitty. It's not that great. And I th think it's important to remember that if you're aware of that, if you have that moment that you realize that what you're producing is not quite what you want it to be, that's the key. That's the area for growth. If you're looking at your work and thinking that you know it all already, or that the work has nowhere to go, that you've already achieved it, then the possibility for learning and the possibility for interaction with a community of um, fellow researchers and peers is completely lost. So uh, when I go to a conference, for instance, I'm sort of thinking about what conferences I want to go to next year. It's become less about me presenting my work and wanting everyone to see like what amazing work I'm doing but going to these places to see how are other people intervening in the field what can I learn from them and I'm not saying that you know I'm going to conferences or reading journals or reading books for the sake of um, you know plagiarizing but I think this idea of mimicry is really important a lot of us learn to write through mimicry uh, we might you know take a certain scholars um, you know, sort of phrase structure or the, the rhythm and the tone of the writing and insert that into our own work. I've certainly done that. 
um, in my career, even though I can't sort of name the exact scholars whose influences have been are, are noticeable and traceable in my work. But once we realize that we can um, engage in this process of producing a lot of stuff, looking at how it works, noticing the moments where it doesn't work, and not beating up, um, beating ourselves up about that. Um, those are the teachable moments, and those are the moments where really amazing creative stuff can come out. Uh, so I hope that this video has been helpful. I've, I know that this small little um, piece of Ira Glass's uh, philosophy about storytelling and production has actually changed my life in the past month a lot more than I can even express. Um, and, and I hope it does some good work for you too. Uh, so comments, questions, feedback, always appreciated. Um, I wish you all luck as the last few uh, weeks of the term wind down, and I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye.